Hi guys, Dane and the Pug Pillows here, and today I'm going to do a review of The Lauras by Sarah Taylor. So let me get started by mentioning that this is one of the five books I was sent to review as part of my position on the shadow panel for the Sunday for the Sun. We do that again as part of my position on the bleh, as part of my position on the shadow panel for the Sunday Times and Peter's Phrases and Dunlop Young Writers of the Year Award. Basically myself and four other bloggers, we each read the five books, we get together and choose our winner, that's revealed to the public, and then they reveal the overall winner. There. There's a link in the description box to a video that will tell you more about that if you want to learn more, because I don't want to go on about it too much, I want to talk about the book, so let's get started. So, the first thing to mention about the Lauras, I suppose, is where it gets its title from. Okay, so let me get started by kind of covering some of the themes in this book. It basically follows a, a young kid called Alex. So Alex is androgynous and refuses to conform to gender stereotypes and there's a lot throughout the book where we see kind of society failing to deal with that so even to a point where at school there'll be bullies that will pin Alex down and um, try to get inside the underwear to see what's down there or they'll keep on saying you know are you a boy or a girl you've got hair like a girl but you look like a boy it's very moving because you see it through kind of Alex's eyes Obviously gender is kind of a big theme in the book, but it's not really, it's almost a background theme because there's also themes of kind of travel. It's very uh, modern in terms of its setting as well and the questions that it, it kind of gets you to ask. So basically Alex's ma packs Alex into the back of a car and they take off across the country. It's almost like an epic road trip. Alex is wondering if you know they'll ever go home so that they can see Alex's dad. Throughout the book, as far as I'm aware, there are never any gender pronouns used for Alex. It's also never resolved, so at the end you get to kind of draw your own conclusion. Interestingly, me and the other reviewers, we've kind of talked about it. And the female reviewers all thought that Alex was a boy and I thought that Alex was a girl. But again, I mean, that's the point. You're not really supposed to be able to say it's non-binary. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of an irrelevant question almost. But equally, what's, what's really well done is that throughout the book, there's never any kind of line that gives away a, a, a gender. So I've been struggling to say, well, you know, Alex is here and then he sends postcards, for example. But that's never used throughout the book. It's never written in such a way that those those pronouns are forced into that position. Alex's Ma is also an interesting character because, well, she's just had a bit of a crazy life. She's almost, I suppose, almost going through a midlife crisis in terms of, I think in the book, she's um, late 30, so she's not that old. But she's kind of realizing that the life she was living isn't the life that she wanted to lead. And so this is how this epic road trip kind of begins. And along the way, they, they both find out a lot more about each other. The title itself, The Lauras, comes from the name that Alex's Ma gives to a succession of different women that she's met throughout the years. And they're not actually called Laura. It's just kind of a convenient plot device, I suppose. And so as uh, Alex and Ma are in the car and they're driving around, Alex will start asking questions and Ma will start to answer them. And then we kind of move backwards and forwards through time between where they are now in this road trip and what happened in the past and how Alex's Ma got to where she is today, which is effectively, you know, in a, in a loveless relationship. I think what's also interesting here is that there is a lot of character development, not necessarily for Alex's Ma. I think that's almost the other way around in that she is a fully formed character at the start of the book and as we as she tells her stories we get to see what turned her into that character that she is and Alex is very much the other way around where as the story progresses Alex starts to take a lot more of um, a lot more initiative as we see by sending postcards to the father there's certainly a sense that Alex doesn't fit in and I'm not sure if it's solely due to um, you know the gender neutrality I guess you would call it and because that's very much what it is it's just to Alex gender is important and I think that's a good thing and I think it's very well done I think books like this especially for me speaking as you know uh, cisgender heterosexual white male had to make sure I ticked all the boxes there you know for books like this they can kind of feel a little bit preachy and uh, Sarah Taylor's this book is not like that at all it, it, it deals with it in what I felt was a very real way um, maybe it does make you uncomfortable from time to time maybe it does make you ask questions but in a good way it doesn't it doesn't hit you around the head with it you know it's it's just a part of the story nothing more nothing less it, it doesn't feel as though the entire story is being concocted around 
this question of gender. It feels as though, you know, this story happens. Oh, and by the way, and I think that's a great thing. You know, you shouldn't really go into covers too much. But what's interesting here is that in the British cover, they have got this figure there. And actually, again, though, you can't really you couldn't definitively say that's a boy or that's a girl. But I, I, I think that in the American cover they use um, maps and that kind of thing to kind of convey more of that travel vibe of the book. And I think that's a good idea for the cover because, again, you don't, I don't, I as a reader don't want to see this even though it, there isn't much to it. I don't want that to then, you know, to weigh on the way that I imagine Alex as a character. All in all though, I'm, I was really impressed by this. And again, I did like the way it does go backwards and forwards through time, but when it does go backwards, like I say, it gives you more insight into uh, Ma, and because there are really, there are really just those main two characters, Alex and Ma, and that again, they do, as they go through the story, they do meet other minor characters, and they meet the Lauras, each of the different Lauras, um, but they don't feel like main characters, it's very much Alex and Ma against the world, and that's kind of how they both see it as well, as they're making this journey. I'm going to read you the blurb as well, because I think this will give you a kind of a better <laughs> overview of what it's about than my rambling, so... I didn't realise my mother was a person until I was 13 years old and she pulled me out of bed, put me in the back of her car and we left home and my dad with no explanations. I thought that Ma was all that she was and all that she had ever wanted to be. I was wrong. As Ma and Alex make their way from Virginia to California, each new state prompts stories and secrets of a life before Alex. Together they put to rest unsettled scores, heal old wounds and search out lost friends. But Alex can't forget the life they've left behind. One other thing I do want to mention before I go into my rating is it's really weird. It ends, look, it ends on this page and then it's the cover. I've, I've, that just bothered me for some reason, especially because it, it ends right at the bottom of the page. You can kind of see what I mean. It's very strange. But the actual aesthetics of the book are great. Very well written. I thought the characters were very believable. So was the dialogue. Sarah Taylor as an author. So she was born and raised in rural Virginia, but then she's studying in uh, East Anglia in the UK of all places as well. So it's an interesting kind of convergence of those two different two different areas of life. But it does very much feel like an American book and there's nothing wrong with that. We haven't really received clear guidelines on how we're supposed to actually rate these books. So I guess it's down to personal preference and uh, we'll find a consensus as to which one we prefer. But I would say this is definitely a contender. I think the other, other people on the panel agree with me as well. It's just, it's just one of those reads that it does broaden your mind, I think, a bit by reading it. And it's not heavy going as well. It's about 300 pages. It reads like a kind of contemporary novel, arguably young adult, pushing adult, I guess. I mean, everyone who reads young adult is like 25 these days anyway. So, so I think it, you, by that you could categorize it as young adult, but it goes in a bit deeper than that. And you wouldn't want a young kid reading this. Or you would kind of actually, I think you would want them reading it. I'm not one for censorship, if you know what I mean. So although there are some pretty dark scenes in it, I think if you're 13, 14, something like that, fair play. You need to know that the world is not always a good place. And also you need to kind of see why why you need to be more understanding of other people and people who aren't like you. Because what Sarah Taylor does a great job of here is actually getting inside Alex's head and you start to view Alex as this really three-dimensional person. This is the kind of book that I think if you were kind of prejudiced, it would change your attitudes towards it. But at the same time, I don't think you would read it if you were prejudiced. So. So it's a kind of a catch 20, catch 20, catch 22. Fuck. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to know about books. So this for me was a five out of five stars. I can't think of many ways, if any, it could be improved. Maybe the cover, maybe not having that weird last page. That is literally what I've got. Um, I think it was exceptionally well written. And for a young writer as well, it's a hell of an accomplishment. So if it sounds like your kind of thing, go out there and grab a copy tell Sarah Taylor that I sent you. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching me waffle on about this book. I'm still mastering the humble art of the video review. I write written reviews at socialbookshelves.com if you want to check that out. And in the meantime, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the sound of this book, whether you'll be picking it up. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in another video soon. Bye bye.